I'm just taking a drop of acetone and placing it on that screw head there to soften that paint. I need to be able to unscrew that. I've got a screwdriver here. You can see the shape of that. It was just a simple screwdriver. It's been cut away with a disc on a Dremel to leave two points. It's ideal for dealing with things like this. That gear's a bit stuck down there with the paint. Now, yeah. the film advance can stuff here on the retina, the Reflex 3. Let's get into this. The little pawl in here that drives this mechanism is, is interesting. This is the shaft in the centre, drives this disc. This disc pushes this little dog, and that little dog in turn drives the film advance wheel here. And that dog is kept in contact with the wheel by a tiny little spring. In some cameras, in earlier cameras, that's a leaf spring, I think. In the later cameras, it's a wire spring, or the other way around, I forget. Doesn't make much difference. Whichever it is, it's a tiny spring, it's very easily lost, and nothing will work without it. So we'll have that out. Let's take that little drive dog out. So we can lift this piece out. That's very yellow looking, that yellow colour that I see there, that's, that's oil, that's oil and grease. The little drive gear, that can come out. There are two screws, one that holds this little ratchet pawl in place, and the ratchet pawl's return spring, which I'm going to remove and carefully put to one side. There's the spacer, and there's the little pawl. And that just stops the film advance from going to roll backwards. Plain screw at this side, and notice that one was loose. At the base of the camera, just checking to make sure I'm not doing any damage to my mirror, I'll hold the rewind button with the pliers previously mentioned unscrew that rewind button. Now the pliers, they were just a cheap pair of pliers, cheap meaning cheap soft steel. You can see they were needle nose pliers once, I cut the nose off them, stuck them in the vise, put a centre punch down between the blades, Ran a small drill down there, ran a larger drill bit down there to leave me with a gap which was ideal for doing rewind buttons. But as you could see it was also ideal for removing that meter setting button on this camera. Right, so our sprocket shaft is driven, our sprocket's driven with a single screw from the sprocket shaft, so we'll have that off. And take that sprocket shaft out and take the sprocket out and the sprocket never really needs any cleaning there's usually nothing to be done there here's our guide bush from the top of the film advance we should have a clutch in here somewhere which is reluctant to fall out here it is this is probably a bit sticky with old grease if we're lucky yep At the base of the camera here, we've got the catch that holds the rewind button locked in place. When you press the rewind button until you 
move the film advance again. So we want to screw off that, put the spring to one side, take the lever out, and here, here I'm just trying to uncover the three screws that hold the film advance bush to the camera body. They're not loose. Sometimes they're loose. If they're loose, you get a bit of wobble in the film advance lever. Let's see if that'll lift out now. It will. Okay. This is very, very sticky with dried out grease. Very unpleasant. Well, that'll do. That'll certainly need some cleaning to get rid of that. A take up spool can come out. You can see that there's a lot of grease, dirty grease in there. That's supposed to be white at this end, not dirty yellowy brown. That'll clean up easily. I know that that'll clean with uh, naphtha, cigarette lighter fluid, on a cotton bud. As long as you're a bit judicious about it, you don't soak it in it, that'll, that'll clean up well. And in the camera body, well you can see there's a film chip or two in here, which typically means that someone didn't set the frame counter correctly when they loaded their film and got to the end and managed to strip out some sprockets, strip the film between the sprocket holes. Or they didn't set the rewind button when they went to start rewinding their film. One or the other or both. That's a very minor example. I get some cameras where there's a just a huge nest of film chips down the bottom there. And you might think they're pretty innocuous, those little pieces of film, those tiny little film chips. But I've seen cameras crippled by one of these. Just a little chip like that finding its way into the right place can just stop some small lightweight undernourished lever from falling into place as it should do and so cripple the entire mechanism. That's enough for the moment. I'm going to be checking this over now and looking closely at it to see what sort of state this is in. I typically don't disassemble these levers on the side, unless I see a very good reason to. Uh, sometimes they're sticky. If they're st at all sticky or they show any signs of stickiness, then they've got to come out. But they are, they're not much fun to put back, I can tell you. The mirror, as I say, I may remove that yet. I haven't decided. Um, sometimes it's useful, even if you're not going to clean it, sometimes it's useful to remove it so you can put it safely to one place because it's incredibly easy to stick your big greasy finger on that mirror while you're busy working on the camera and getting the fingerprints off there is no is no fun at all. Alright. As you can see, I've been busy. I've been cleaning. This is all nice and clean now. The body is ready to be reassembled. I took the frame counter out, it, uh, you didn't see me doing that, but basically that's all held in with a single screw here from the centre, taking it apart is by no means as exciting as putting it back. That screw is always very very tight however, and uh, inevitably you're going to want a very good fitting screwdriver, and inevitably you're probably going to want to use a pair of pliers or something to give you the extra torque on that screwdriver to get that screw loose. It's a chrome plated screw. That head would be damaged if you cammed the screwdriver out, so just don't do that. Lots of downward pressure. Use something to provide extra torque. In my case I use the pliers. Anyway, with that aside, let's start putting some pieces back in here. So I'm going to start with our tripod socket and that was just the insert that supports the base of the film cassette there and there are three screws that hold our tripod socket in place it 
and this is a handy thing to put in early because it supports the end of the camera and otherwise every time you bump the camera body down on the bench it would hit the back release and the back would fly open which gets very tedious after about the second or third time it happens there's three screws in place and now I'll tighten those up That's good. This frame counter components. I've got everything here cleaned up and ready to go back in place. It's always entertaining getting all this piece back into to the position it needs to be in. So I have to sort of do it in stages. Nothing, nothing goes smoothly here. Okay, so let's get this frame counter back together. Well, I'm just going to put some synthetic grease on this wavy washer. Sit that on there. Drop that into place. Now, yeah. there's two cutouts visible here. The big cutout goes to the film advance end. Our frame counter disc goes on there and the number one is pointing to the back of the camera. And then we have the piece that holds it all together. Let's see if I can get that fitted. And the single screw. And I'll run that down only loosely. That's tight. I'll back it up a bit. I've got to get our lever in place. So I need that lifted up so I can get that in place. We've also got to get the spring in here too. See if I can get the spring in correctly and the spring acts to push the lever inwards so it sits let's get it sitting there and why won't that sit down in place it doesn't want to all right We'll leave it there, we'll get it hooked in place later. I'll get my lever in here. I'll give that a white bits and synthetic grease on the underside surface. Get that lever in position. And I'll pull that spring back to engage it with the little tab on the bottom of this lever. course that's easier said than done. There it is. That's it. Let's tighten that screw down slightly. We'll get the final position of this sorted out once everything's up and running. But the little tab, the little indicator should be directly to the back to the back of the camera. Knit that screw up tight. And that's our frame counter back together. And if we were to move it forward here, it rotates smoothly enough. And there's no ratchet action there, of course, because there's no ratchet for that particular component. It's the friction of our wavy washer that holds that in position. Okay, well, with that piece out of the way that's a very, a very handy thing to have done now I'm going to think about what else I'm going to do next just going to lubricate the uh, film advance shaft with some graphite grease I'm getting near the end of my graphite grease container so I've ordered some more and I don't know what it'll be like until I get my hands on it of course that being the way of the world but hopefully it'll be good 
And I like this particular grease for this purpose because it, I suppose you'd say it was tacky. It sticks to the uh, surfaces it's put on very well. It stays on that shaft, so it always remains between the shaft and the bush. Now I'm going to put some synthetic grease on the ratchet teeth here, top and bottom. Alright, so where is our film take-up spool? We'll drop that in place. And just swing that lever back out in the way. Now, the rest position to start this in is with that tab towards the end of the camera. Now, if you do that, you'll have one and a third turns of pre-tension on the film advance lever when we get to that stage, which will return the film advance lever to the rest position reliably. Normally you want one turn of pre-tension with retinas, but the reflexes with their more complex cocking action, a little bit of extra tension works very well. And without it, you'll end up with the film advance lever not necessarily being particularly enthusiastic about returning to the rest position. Okay, so that's sitting in position. Get that around. Its normal rest position would be there. The tab sticking up at this point and the larger cutout here where it would allow the, the end of film lock to drop in. Okay, well I've got to put the other pieces of the film advance at the bottom of the camera now and then put a special base on the camera so I can assemble the camera easily. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I want to assemble the clutch assembly to the top of the film advance first and again I'm using graphite grease in this position. And for much the same reasons because it's nice and tacky it stays where it's put. Now assembling the clutch is always entertaining. But I have a, uh, a technique which serves me well. To get the spring onto the centerpiece, and the little tab needs to be sitting in the slot. I've got a pair of crimp pliers here that I can hold that in position. And then holding that loosely, I can rotate this to pull that spring in. And then take the outside piece, slide it over the top. And there's the clutch assembled. And it will move smoother in one direction than the other, which is fine because that's the direction it needs to move. Back to the camera body. I'll put a smear of synthetic grease through the center of that, pop that on the top, just rotate that until it engages with the notches on the top of the take-up spool. Then I've got the bush, the guide bush for the top of the film advance shaft, and I'm just going to squeeze in a bit of grease into that gear set, just using hydraulic pressure. If you've ever packed wheel bearings, you'll have know exactly how that works. Just revolve the take-up spool there to engage the gear with the clutch. Right, so we've got a screw at this side. And interestingly, that screw was loose when we took the camera apart.
and a bush that goes here. Now that should be flat side up. One side's got a slight countersink to it. That should be down. If you put that side up, the screw will tighten up into it and the pawl will not be able to move. Whoops. I'm using a... Uh, not using my best tweezers here. I don't know where my good ones have gone. And I'm racing against time because I can see that the video camera is complaining that the battery's tired. So I'm trying to get this done before it stops working. There we go. Get that in position. Okay, screw started. Make sure that pawl doesn't get trapped under there. Which it's busy doing at the moment. When you're in a hurry, things don't go right. I've noticed that. When you've got all the time in the world, things fly together. Okay. There's that in position. Let's do those two screws up lightly and put the spring in for that uh, pawl. Okay, so the spring for the pawl needs to go in place. I'm just going to use a toothpick to help me position this. And that's providing the tension on this ball to push it back towards the, the centre which is where it needs to be. Now there's a little gear that goes on there and I'll just see I've just picked up a spring with that which I didn't intend to so I'll just pop that to one side. Right, so I'll take some synthetic grease just run it around the inside of this edge of this gear and pop that into place. If I rotate that anti-clockwise, it pushes the pawl aside, it fits in easily. We have this piece that goes on next, onto the squared shaft. Then we have the little drive dog arrangement which drops in there like that. And then we have the tiny spring. I'll zoom you in a bit. Okay, so the spring is not symmetrical. It's got one straight side and one bent side. The bent side should be towards the pole, the little drive dog. The flat side should be towards this piece. Now it's just sitting in there at the moment. Hopefully it won't fly away while I'm working. That piece goes on top. The gear goes on the top. And I'll run the screw down. That's good. Now I'll pop the lock in there, the end of film lock, to hold everything in place. Well, well I don't need to do that. I can hold this with my finger. While I'm doing that screw up. Okay, so that's not that's not going to fall apart now. That's all good. Back to the bottom of the camera. Zoom you out a little bit. That's better. And I want the latch that holds the rewind button and 
in place. That can go in here. It's return spring. And the screw that holds it in place, which is a, is a shoulder screw. Two shoulders, one that the spring rip can roll, revolve around and one that the lever can revolve around. So I'm making sure that the lever moves freely. Do that screw up and lift the tail of that spring into position. Like that, so that lever is now sprung loaded. And put the sprocket shaft in next. So the sprocket goes in here, the end with the slot in goes upwards. And I'll lubricate the shaft with some synthetic grease. Towards the top, towards the bottom where it passes through the body casting. And I normally put a smear on the gear pinion at the top for good measure. That should slide in here. And got to get that lined up with the sprocket of course. Seems unusually tight. We've got slack in these two screws off. The gear set might need to be pushed across a bit. Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm holding that with my finger from underneath. I can hold back that lever and allow that to drop into place. And there you can see the end of it. Let's clip that mirror down into position. And I can see I've got a fingerprint on there already. I'll deal with that immediately before it gets any worse. Very lightly, I'm wiping this, only just touching it. With a cotton bud with degreaser on it. Yeah, I'm applying no force at all to that glass. It's just the weight of the cotton fibres falling on that mirror. And I'll do that once more and then I'll stop. That looks fine. Remind me not to put my greasy finger on there again. Back where we were. Oh yes. Let's get this sprocket and sprocket shaft tied together. A small screw goes through there and drives that. Tweezers. Yeah, 
Yeah, that started nicely. I'll do that up tight. The rewind button I'll put on the bottom of the camera now. 